You're listening to episode 32 of the BookCast for Dwell, an Advent study in liturgy. This BookCast has been designed to give you another way to engage with the contents of the book. Hi, my name is Rachel Fehrenbach, and I am the author of Dwell and your host for these episodes. Today we're wrapping up our Advent study, and we're dwelling on this truth. The purpose of a temple is to house the throne of God. Today we're wrapping up our Advent study, and I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. I've enjoyed getting to explore the different ways that God has dwelled with us and his redemptive plan to dwell with us as the Messiah. I've also enjoyed getting to dig into these concepts of hope and peace and joy and love, renewal and celebration, and really getting to dig into those themes and what it means in light of God's redemptive plan and in light of living a life for him and to reflect his goodness and his glory and to get to dwell with him on a daily basis. And so today I would like to read to you a story I wrote from the perspective of a new Eve, meaning a woman in this modern day. And I call this a new day. I wrote the story in order to help us to dwell on this truth that the purpose of a temple is to house the throne of God. So as we wrap up today, I'm going to read you this story. I fall through the page into the space bent between time before and time eternal, hovering in what is not known while waiting to find out what is. I find myself wondering if I should be afraid. There is no sickening feeling in my stomach, my usual signal to be on alert. But it's not there. In fact, a subtleness has taken deep root in my bones and spread out to my nerves. That subtleness vibrates the space around me with its energy. At first, I think it's radiating out from deep within my bones, but I quickly realize that's not correct. The subtleness is so great around me, it has permeated my being and cultivated little offshoots mirroring its presence within my body. The space flexes and then contorts itself into a structured form right before me, and around me, and in me. I am suddenly deeply aware I have been invited into a sacred moment. I am not afraid, but I feel unworthy to be here. This structure is awe-inspiring in its expanse and its depth, but before I can mire its fullness, I am thrust forward, deeper, farther, further, invited. The energy that carries me deposits me with care on the ground before a large and looming tree. It is centered in what I immediately want to call a jungle because of the sheer thickness of the vegetation around me. But I notice the cultivated edge, the trimmed leaves, the pruned branches, the cutaway pasture, and identify it instead as a garden. The colors of the plants, flowers, and the tree leaves are so vibrant, they dance on the lines of my vision. And their smell Each individual scent swirls with its neighbors to create an aroma that tickles my nose with delight before mingling with the inhaled breath it rides into my lungs. I feel a pleasant sensation warm my chest. It reminds me of the subtleness that is still rooted deep in my bones. I feel a warm, padded thing walk over the top of my foot and I immediately jump at the shock of this sensation. In turn, my quick movement startles the animal a small snowy white bunny, and it darts away from me. My eyes follow it as it scampers over a large and protruding root of the tree. I take a moment to study the looming champion and realize that the light engulfs the tree around and within, much like how the subtleness radiated around and within me. The light emanates and permeates from both within and without, weaving in and out around its branches coming from within the very branches itself and yet not contained to it. Am I about to die? I ask out loud, though I'm not sure why since I'm alone. Except I'm not. I feel the life of his presence pulsating out from the tree and towards me like blood through the veins with the beat of a heart. The tree is consumed by his presence and yet not burned. The way I feel right now, I realize. I drop to my knees, aware that any other action would be an inappropriate response to the holy ground on which I stand. Look up. The command comes from within and around and before me. I obey, pushing myself up from the ground and sitting back on my heels. 
The pulse of divinity continues in a steady and faithful rhythm, but the light shifts from the tree and casts the shadow on the ground beside it. The shadow grows, its form shifting as well from a defined trunk with branches to the stem of a lampstand with seven branches that end in cups. I recognize it as the temple's lampstand. It grows larger and larger until the shadow rises from the ground and stands before the tree, both a shield and a veil. A shadow might not be the best word to describe it, as shadows often bring to mind darkness. This shape was not one of darkness. In fact, it held within its design hope and joy. But it cannot compare to the life-giving tree behind it. I raise a hand to touch the shadow, but as I reach out, the light from the tree burns into the shadow and disintegrates it into little pieces. They flutter to the ground like ash and collect in a pile at my toes. The edges of the shadow remain, but in its center, the shadow has been consumed by the light. North to south, east to west, a cross to cover all of life. The light bursts forth from the cross shape, and I instinctively shield my eyes with my arm. But the rhythmic pulse of his presence guides my arm away from my face. With my vision unblocked, I can see that the light that bursts forth has pulled back into itself and gathered into a swirl. It picks up speed with each completed cycle, swirling, swirling, rushing, rushing. The sight and sound merge, and I hear the violent wind before and around and within me. The swirl breaks out into a million little pieces of light, flinging every which way, many of which I can no longer see. I'm aware of their presence, just like I'm still aware of his presence. I feel a warmth above me, and I lift my eyes to see one of the lights hovering. I'm not sure if it has taken on the shape of a flame or if my eyes and my brain are attempting to make sense of it with something I understand. Whereas I could feel the pulse of his presence emitting from the tree before me, now I can feel it radiating from within me, just like that settledness in my bones. I feel compelled to look down at the palms of my hands. I expect to see them empty, but instead a box with a bow sits right there in the middle of my right hand. I pinch the ribbon of the bow with my left and tug. The ribbon slips off and the sides of the box fall away in unison. What remains is a crackling ball of energy that I am simultaneously in awe of and terrified by. I hesitate, unsure I want to do what is necessary. But I know. I know that I am known and this gift is created specifically for me and to be used by me. With a decisive move, I scoop it up and press it against my heart. Where I expected shocks of electricity to be endured, I instead feel a tingle that hits every nerve from head to toe. It's like my system has been recalibrated, and I can actually feel for the first time in my life. And what I feel is awe. Awe as understanding floods the unused spaces of my mind, and I comprehend the layered complexity of the images I just watched take their turn before me. The tree, the lamp, the cross, the people, all pointing to the light, that life-giving presence that envelops and does not consume, the one that rises in victory over darkness. Awe is what I feel. Worship is what I do. I alternate between pressing my face to the ground and scrambling to my feet to dance without reserve. I'm not sure which is the more proper response to standing at the foot of the throne of grace and in the presence of the Almighty. It is during my fourth period of dancing that I noticed the others, those parts of the light that had dispersed, gathering from the corners and distances, called back to their home, back to their dwelling place, back and yet forward. Because this is not the original garden, this is a new thing, a fuller expression of his creativity. Filled with abundance, filled to the ends with his glory. Shalom. True and complete. There is no lamp, no sun, because the light sits on the throne at the center of this cosmic tabernacle. It is all and everything, heaven and earth, garden and city. With a clear and strong voice, the one seated on the throne proclaims, It is done. I close my eyes and I feel the words within me and around me and before me radiating out and permeating within, enveloping but not consuming, loving and healing. My eyes open to the ceiling of my bedroom. I am no longer in that beautiful garden, 
put him on the floor next to my bed. It takes me a second to register that my head hurts. Ow! A quick glance around reveals that I hit my head on the t- end table when I fell. My roommate rolls over in her bed, flips on the lamp on her end table, and flaps her hand to get my attention. You okay? She signs with one hand while covering a yawn with the other. I rub the side of my head. Just sat up too fast and hit my head. I sign my answer. She mumbles, okay, forgetting to sign it, then rolls back over, pulling the blanket back over her shoulders. Situated back under my own covers, my mind drifts back to the image of the new creation, and with it comes the feeling of awe and the desire to worship. I know I won't be able to explain what I saw to anyone, especially not my roommate, but that feels okay. Like this image has been given to me as a gift, not for any grand revelation, but simply as a reminder that I am known, loved, and chosen. Intentionally designed to dwell with my creator, I tug my covers up around my chin and smile before falling back into a peace-filled sleep. Thank you for dwelling with me today on this truth that a temple is designed to house the throne of God. As we draw to a close this Advent season, I would like to read to you from Revelation 22, 12 through 17 and verse 20 from the New Living Translation. Look, I, Jesus, am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love to live a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come.